Hello, the Big D is back with a Tuesday night edition. Before I bring in Mike, please subscribe, like, and share the Spunky Spectrum Sports YouTube page. I know my Jack was stunk on Sunday, but uh, we'll give it another try. Try tonight. Uh, also, check out the Big D podcast for the audio listeners, Spotify and Apple. So, uh, joining us, a uh, high point sports content creator, ready to discuss all things Titans and Jacks with me. My, my catch, or as he goes by on Twitter, FF my catch. So, a uh, catch, uh, welcome. And, uh, and, uh, I was wondering, uh, are you are you going to be on Derrick Henry's throne this weekend? <laughs> no, I I don't think I will be. But man, I'm I'm excited to see King Henry. It's uh, we're starting to get the snow coming down in some places, and we know that he gets stronger as the season goes on. So, uh, should be a fun game to watch. Trust trust me, I'll, trust me. My Jags know everything about Derrick Henry because I think some defenders are still licking their wounds over what. Oh over yeah. Uh, that stiff arm a couple years ago. Yep. I wouldn't want to try and tackle him, would you? Uh, uh, um, no. No. <laughs> Six four two sixty and runs and runs faster than a Maserati. Yeah, that, he doesn't have that first acceleration anymore. But once he gets in the open field and he opens the stride up, he's he's still got a little bit of speed at the top end. Yeah, so obviously AFC South game, you know what that means, divisional game. Oh yeah. And uh based on and uh obviously things are changing in Nashville because it looks like Derrick Henry's wolf is coming down, potentially gone after this year. Ryan Taylor looks like he's definitely gone. Will Levis looks like the heir apparent in Nashville. So um do you think the future is do you think the future is brighter in Nashville, or is it just uncertain knowing there could be changes with the quarterback and running back? Yeah. Uh, when I talk about team building and what I would do as a GM, like obviously we're on a podcast, so there's a reason we're here and we're not making big team decisions. The The first piece is finding those Yeah, just ask, just ask the Bills about firing their <laughs> offensive coordinator when their defense had 12 men on the field last night. Yeah, and a bunch of fluky turnovers. It's really not the OC's fault. But uh, they found their quarterback of the future. Like Will Levis is the guy in Tennessee, at least for 2024 and likely for 2025, at least on a tryout procedure. But we talk about the other cornerstone positions. We're talking about left tackle. We're talking about edge rusher. We're talking about wide receiver. Like they don't have a future at any of those. Like I'm trying to figure out who's going to be playing left tackle this week with injuries riddling the offensive line. So, uh, future is bright at quarterback. They got some work cut out for him, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is, but the Titans always seem to have injuries in offense. Well, I mean, Taylor one was uh, was the left tackle for many, many years, but he's gone. And uh, you drafted uh, Peter Scaronsi, the uh, lineman from Northwest, I really like before the draft. I mean. Mm-hmm. Guard or tackle, uh, he's playing guard for you guys, right? Yep. They put him in at left guard, which I think is his natural position, but it's tough to take a guard that high, like just not ideal to team building. I don't know. The Col- I don't know. The Colts seem to hit the right pick with uh, Quinn and Nelson in 2018. For sure. But now with all the trouble they have at left tackle, like do you kick Skaronsky out and let him try left tackle? Like do you try and rotate through like Andre Dillard, Dylan Raddins? Like there's all of these other – question marks across the offensive line. Yeah, that's that's a tough piece, especially because you know the left tackle position is the most important on the offensive line because if you don't have a good left tackle, guess what? Your quarterback's going to end up on his butt. Oh, yeah. He uh, he felt it the last couple of weeks playing the you know Steelers and the Buccaneers. That's a couple of nasty defensive fronts. Yeah, looking back at that game on Sunday, uh, the Titans did not block left as well. Mate threw an interception. And it was a rather pedestrian kind of game. Tampa won the game twenty to six. Uh, Tennessee's always game, but uh, you know, Baker Mayfield playing you, playing you, and then Mike Evans. You, you you wonder what would have happened if Mike Evans caught that caught his. First potential touchdown. <laughs> he probably has a. He probably put 
puts up what two hundred, a couple hundred yards, couple touchdowns, and puts up a forty burger. Yeah, and when we talk about so what Mike Evans just did to the secondary, like how do you feel Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, and Evan Ingram are going to stack up? Do you think they're going to eat the entire afternoon, or how do you think that's going to go? Well, I bet you Calvin – well, I'm sure Calvin Ridley owners are probably thinking, when is he going to show up? Because Calvin Ridley has been colder than Siberia lately. Yeah. But um, I think it's a, I think it's a good question. I mean, generally, you don't run on Tennessee – Mm-hmm. Especially with that big, especially with the uh, you know who manning the middle of the defensive line, Jeffrey Gen- Simmons. I generally I am not running at Jeffrey Simmons. We know what he can do, R- run stuff and end pass rushing. One of the best interior linemen with Aaron Donald, Quentin Williams. You don't know, so I expect this will be a heavy Trevor Lawrence game and. I think it's a bounce back spot for the Jacks past in tech. Mm-hmm. That I that San Francisco team on Sunday was capable of winning the Super Bowl. And you know what? I'm not sure anybody, even Philadelphia or Kansas City, could win with the Niners playing that well all and healthy. Mm-hmm. Now, this weekend, not the same quarterback, not the same level of talent. I think this is a better spot for Trevor. I think it's a, another great spot for Christian Kirk, who's been so consistent. I think it's a big time Calvin Ridley spot because we'll see whether or not Calvin Ridley is just can catch or if he can make plays because the jet because if Trevor finds time, I think he can find Rid, Ridley up the field because it's been more Kirk underneath or Kirk safe pass, nothing down the field. This mm-hmm. might change this weekend. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. The Titan secondary, even at full health, isn't that impressive. And now we're dealing with a couple of injuries. We have to see if everybody's going to play this week. Uh, definitely a smash start opportunity for Christian Kirk and for uh, Calvin Ridley. And uh, I'm hoping the Jags can actually hold on to the ball because seemingly we give it away two or three times a day again. But uh, no, hopefully that's not an issue because uh, I hate when the other team gets the ball and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Especially in a divisional game like this where, you know, it could get ugly. It could turn into a bit of a gross game. Like having a turnover early could just set the tone for the rest of the game. Oh, yeah. I mean, just look at Buffalo last night. As soon as uh, – uh, James Cook fumbled. I'm like, I'm like, Buffalo's got no chance to win in this game. Like, the crowd is so tight. Yep. I mean, but you know, that's one of the great things. And the AFC South's changing because everybody's got a young quarterback. I mean, Trevor, you guys with Will Evans. I mean, dang, CJ Stroud's all of a sudden in the MVP race. I mean, yeah. Like he's the hottest thing that he's the hottest thing to hit Houston since Akeem Olajuwon one back in the year. <laughs> Great basketball reference, by the way. Hey, at least hey, at least he's got a couple rings. Whether Michael Jordan played or didn't play, at least Akeem's got yeah. the rings. Good for him. And then of course the Colts with Anthony Richardson. So I mean, the AFC South's full of young quarterbacks, not a bunch of. All faults and other defections. Yeah. Do you think it's do you think it's good that the AFC South's got four quarterbacks that uh, four quarterbacks who their teams can say, you know what, these guys can lead our team for the next few years. Yeah, I think it's great for the AFC South. I think it's just what they needed because the last couple of years has been rocky. Like Ryan Tannehill, I love what he has done for Tennessee. He's done some amazing things, pulling them out of kind of some despair years before 2019. Uh, but he was never going to win a Super Bowl. Like, we need to get that straight. Will Levis, it's early. There's a lot of hope. Uh, CJ Stroud, I, if you told me preseason that the Texans were going to have an MVP caliber player on their team, I would have laughed at you. And now it's their rookie quarterback crushing records. Like, I think the rookie passing record somewhere around like 4,100 yards, and he's on pace for almost 5,000 right now. So extra game, even out of the question, that's an extra 900 yards. So 
it's it's great for the AFC South. It's great for football. It makes it more fun and more watchable when there's good quarterback play. Because I mean, we've seen some rough quarterback play, and it's not nearly as fun. Yeah, Adrian O'Connell, Zach Wilson, I'd rather see CJ Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, Trevor Lawrence. Thank you. We get to watch uh, Tommy DeVito against the Commanders' defense on Sunday, so get excited for that. Oh, what's up, about Tommy DeVito against against the Patriots starting quarterback Week Twelve? Ooh, that'll be fun. <laughs> it is the uh, might be a game you don't want to win. Is the over under like twenty five for that game? Sounds like uh, sounds like Iowa records or whatever game that. Yep. Was. Yep. Or Iowa Northwestern. I mean, coming off Kentucky, I mean, I thought Will Levis was selling better than twenty one, not as great in twenty two. But to me, Will Evans looked like he should have been on the world's strongest quarterback. I mean, the dude was almost too jacked. Yeah. And maybe overconfident. I mean, how do you – I mean, what did – I'm not sure how much Kentucky football you saw, but what did you see of Evans coming into the NFL? Yeah, so uh, I do pre-draft quarterback rankings, and, like, full transparency, Will Levis was my quarterback four. I had – uh couple of actually I think I might have even had him quarterback five behind Hendon Hooker clearly that was a miss like he in 2021 looked poised to run an NFL offense and when he was surrounded with NFL talent like he had Wandale Robinson on that team like he was able to operate and move and function then in 2022 and this is something that I kind of dislike with the college process like they don't have to say exactly what the injury is so Will Levis was just dealing with arm injury leg injury like rib maybe injury so when you're trying to identify like what that does to his play and what that does to the tape like you don't know because you're just kind of guessing if it's an ac sprain obviously there's going to be problems with the throwing motion but it we didn't know so you didn't know whether to hold it against him or say it's cool that he's this tough clearly he's healthy now clearly he's balling out and i i was wrong will levis is an nfl caliber quarterback and the future is bright for Tennessee at quarterback. I know Love was dealing with a high ankle sprain at Kentucky. But um I mean maybe maybe the lack of talent. It's not like Kentucky's Alabama or Georgia where fifteen guys should own the NFL and mm -hmm. fifteen guys come in and all of a sudden the offense is just the same. Yeah, they were definitely struggling to bring in more NFL talent, which is tough because you have a quarterback with all that excitement. That should be an easy recruiting process, but Kentucky couldn't land enough weapons for him, and he definitely took a step back in 2022. And now that he's playing with DeAndre Hopkins, he looks better. He just needs an offensive line in front of him to protect him a little bit, and I'm a little worried Sunday for uh, Josh Allen on the other side. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh... – True, the Falcons aren't the toughest assess, but I mean, Pittsburgh, we both know how good Pittsburgh's defense is. Both played them recently and know you face TJ Watt and uh, Lonzo Highsmith on the other side. Uh, your quarterback's going to be under duress. And then Tampa, I mean, sure, it's not the Brady led buck, but still, that's a good veteran front seven. Yeah, and they were moving Vita Vea around, and Levante David is nasty. How did they move Vita Vea? That guy's that guy's as big as a house. They were lining him up. There was a. I was watching the condensed version and some of the all twenty two. Uh, they moved Vita Vea instead of at nose guard, and they lined him up against the Titans' backup left tackle, and it was like just teach tape for how a big guy should pass rush. He pushed the tackle into <laughs> Will Levis, and then pulled Levis down. And it was like. Oh no, it's gonna be a long afternoon. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, I remember I remember I think it was last year where Vita Vea got Seth Matthew Stafford and then he started the long ball. Yep. <laughs> He's a fun player. I just wish it wasn't against Will Levis. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't, I mean, and Basically, every time somebody sacks the quarterback, you think it's rough in the past, and that, that was not rough in the past. That mm -hmm. was just being being stronger than anyone. Just a big dude.
But um, obviously with Tennessee, I mean, I mean, it feels weird seeing DeAndre Hopkins play for the Titans. A, is DeAndre Hopkins more than, is DeAndre a little more than a possession receiver at this point of his career? I think he still has what made him special as a deep threat earlier in his career. Like he has elite, elite body positioning with the ball in the air and he can go up and grab it. We saw that against Atlanta when Will had a little bit of time to take deep shots and really air it out a little bit more. I don't know if we're going to see it that much on Sunday. Like Will Levis isn't going to have a lot of time. Hopkins isn't going to be able to run as deep of a route as we want. He still has a little bit of juice, but it's not enough to be game-breaking like a Jamar Chase, like a Justin Jefferson, like a Tyreek Hill. It's just enough that Levis can trust him and get him ready. Almost like that security blanket because, you know, on third down, guess what? He's looking for number 10 in white and blue and white. Yeah. I actually want to talk about his other security blanket. I don't know how familiar you are with Kyle Phillips, but he's not uh, playing. Yeah, he's been, he's been yeah. in for the last couple of weeks. He's not playing that many snaps. It's hilarious. Like, we pull up the game utilization for the week 10. Like, he only ran 47% of routes. But he had more targets than Nick Westbrook Aquino. He had more targets than Chris Moore. He had more catchable targets than anybody else on the team because Will Levis has worked with him and knows where to get him the ball in space. Like Kyle Phillips should be earning more snaps on this team. And if he doesn't, we need to talk about what Vrabel's doing with his wideouts. Uh, do we know if Trayvon Burks is going to be out of concussion protocol this that week? That is a great question. Right now, he is listed as questionable. It's normal for the week after for them to not play. I would be worried about it being part of a bigger problem if he doesn't play this week. But Tennessee came off a Thursday night game, so that might have... Should have had extra time. And, uh, I mean, we'll see. I'm going to I'm gonna say soft probably that he plays this week. I mean, you think the tight... I mean, I don't know what it is, but to me, it seems like the Titans really miss A.J. Brown because watching that 21, 21 <sighs> A.J. Brown was everywhere. And then... Yep. I don't know. It seemed like the Titans panicked because they saw the quarter, the wide receivers getting paid and like, we're not going to pay A.J. Brown. It's one of those things that we thought receivers grow on trees. And if you look at the receivers that went around Burks, they do grow on trees. They just... Picked the wrong one. Burke still needs a little bit of time to grow. He has all of the tools required. Like, he's big, he's strong, he's fast. And listening to Des did an interview with DeAndre Hopkins and talked about that relationship and mentoring Burks, he had glowing reviews. So if DeAndre Hopkins is taking Burks under his wing, like that's good enough for me, and maybe we don't see it in 2023. But he's a name to watch for 2024 in a bounce-back campaign. I mean, uh, let me tell uh, I mean, you already know this draft. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jameson Williams, Jahan Dotson, Trayvon Burks, and Christian Watson top of the second round. Yep. I think I would rather have Burks than Jameson Williams as it stands now. But the rest of that list is uh... – Tough to hear. Are you sure you are you sure you'd be willing to wager a few bucks on that? Uh Burks for uh Jamison Williams. <laughs> it depends. Is does Williams catch his I he's been having a great campaign. I mean, not great campaign. He's having a increase in usage that is commensurate with a year two rece uh, receiver that you want to see. I just uh I really like Williams pre-draft. He just hasn't met expectations yet. Plus, I mean, Williams came off the 20 CL, and then he missed the first four games this year. So, plus, there's a lot of mouths to feed in Detroit. Two running backs, I'm on Ronald Sam Laporta. Yep. And then they also just traded for Donovan Peoples-Jones, who that was kind of a red flag to me because DPJ's big thing is that he's a deep threat, and Jamison Williams' big thing – is that he's a deep threat. So I don't know if there's something brewing there. What's up with uh, Derrick Henry's usage? Because I'm used to seeing Derrick Henry go for 200 yards, and now all of a sudden it's like, well, Derrick Henry 60% of 
and Todd J. Spears, rookie out of two lanes, getting more and more involved. A, it looks like to me, their Henry's days as being King Henry might be numbered. And B, do you, th- do you think Derrick Henry can still be the top running back on a, on a championship team? I do. But I I also agree with what you're saying. Like, his days are numbered. He is the second leading touch leader in the NFL. So, he's had over the course and, of his career. Wait, and let me take a wild guess. The first guy is Josh. The number one guy is Josh Jacobs. It's Zeke. What? Oh, I, oh, since he's – Over their career, not just this year. Oh, yeah, then yeah. it would have loved yeah. Zeke. Uh, I think there's – Latavius Murray keeps, you know, popping up in there, which is just oh, hilarious oh, to see. Oh, oh. Do I need to see another Latavius Murray touchdown? Oh, man. Oh, and Angel loses their wings every time Murray gets a carry. But, yeah, Ty J. Spears, he's a talented rookie, and I think he's actually the perfect complement to what Henry does in this offense. So, I – you're a Jags fan. You're intimately aware. Like he beats down up defense. He grinds them into the ground. And their usage, he's still getting the majority of the rush attempts. What's weird is that he's getting the majority of the rush attempts, but Spears is getting the majority of the snaps. So that means that they're putting him in on passing downs. That means that they're using him in pass blocking situations. He's running double the routes of Henry. He's getting like triple the targets. He's being used in ways that we wish Henry was being used, but I think they're just trying to keep the legs fresh for as long as they can. Do you think that they should have traded Derrick Henry away so they could have given him a chance at a ring? Or do you think that it was the right thing to do just keeping him in Tennessee? I think the Titans should I think the Titans owed it to Derrick Henry and giving him a chance at a ring. I mean, Derrick Henry is one of those guys we'll look back and think that guy's one of the greatest football players ever. And we always want the uh, great players getting a chance in a ring. I mean, it doesn't seem right that Dan Marino never got a Super Bowl ring. Oh, Larry mm-hmm. Fitzgerald, J.J. Watt, Barry Sanders, some of these great players. Derrick Henry's one of those players. And whether it was Tennessee not wanting to move Derrick Henry or team not wishing, not wanting to meet Tennessee's spies, I think the Titans could have – could have traded Derrick Derrick Henry and Hajay Spears could have been the heir apparent. Plus Derrick Henry could have been the missing piece to a Cowboy Super Bowl run. Yes. Cowboy Super Bowl run because Tony Pollard's not it right now. I mean, talk about a perfect compliment to Tony Pollard. Get yourself a hammer in there. Let Pollard just do the quick stuff and get him in space. Another they're running Pollard exactly what he's not good at, which is between the tackles like a hammer. And by the way, the Cowboys put up 49 points, and Tony Pollard wasn't even the yeah. best Cowboy running back on Sunday. Like Rico imagine, Dowdle. Like you imagine if Derrick Henry had been a Dallas Cowboy in that Eagle game, Dallas might win and control the NFC East now. They've got to win out and hope Philly lose a couple more times. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! So um, obviously, uh, this game's big, not just because Derrick Henry, but uh, I don't know what's going on with Trevor Lawrence. I've seen, uh, I've read some negativity about what's up with Trevor. Like, I mean, Trevor's interception, the, the touchdown interception ratio seen. It's fine the last year or so, but I mean the Jacks aren't throwing the ball deep this year. I don't know if that's just because the offense line's not great or because Trevor just loves Christian Kirk because he's that security blanket. A la DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. I mean he needs I you can't say he needs another weapon. Like he has three to four very solid weapons in the offense. So it's not weapons. I mean Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Travis yeah. E. I mean, talk about great running backs. I think Travis e, Travis E. Thien's like, whoa, what is he in rushing this year? Oh, he's got to be top five. I think yeah, I, yeah. I mean that dude's that dude's got a burst. Yep. You He's might. quicker than a hiccup. 
trying to think. Does he have a little CJ2K in him? I don't know if I'd go that far. He's maybe I like said a lighter a version of that. CJ2K. A little yeah. I, I could see it. Uh, I think we need to give CJ2K a little more credit, but... Hey, one of hey, one of us won his first fantasy foot the first year we played fantasy football because of CJ two K. Very cool. But do you think Lawrence is due for a bounce back week against Tennessee, or do you think this is uh, another two interception game? Uh I mean, uh, I think this is I think this is when we see Trevor Lawrence. He uh, Trevor got better with the second half last year, and. Mm-hmm. I mean, he struggled against Kansas City. City struggled against San Francisco. Guess what? Kansas City's got a top three defense in the league. Mm-hmm. San Francisco might be the best team if everyone's healthy. He's not playing the San Francisco 49ers every week. Tennessee's a much easier opponent. The Titans secondary is vulnerable. Plus, I think this is I think this is where the Jaguars open up the offense more. I think we see Kirk involved. I think we see Ridley, Ingram, Ethan. I think this is a bounce back spot for the Jaguars because you remember, I think it was week seven when the when the Baltimore Ravens just embarrassed the Detroit Lions. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to play all the Detroit Lions I could week eight because they're going to beat the living snout out of the Raiders. Yep. Well, you got to you said. You saying we're the Raiders? I mean, the I didn't even care who was the Raider quarterback. It could have been <laughs> could have been Kenny Stabler, could have been Rich Gannon, could have been Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. They're not winning. It turned out yeah. it was right. But I think that's one of those spots for the I think that's one of those spots for the Jags. Plus, you don't have you don't have Nick Bosa, Eric Olmsted, and Chase Young coming after you. You've got Jeffrey Simmons and his friends. <laughs> Jeffrey Simmons and his buddies. Man, that's tough. I mean, be honest, be honest I think the Jacks have to get Travis Etienne involved because when Travis Etienne scores a touchdown, we win. When Travis Etienne doesn't score a touchdown, we lose. Guess what happens? If you don't run the ball, you don't win. Mm-hmm. Look what happened last night. The team, Javante Williams, ran the ball, and the Denver Broncos won the game. Yeah. A lot of turnover luck that went into that, though, and hopefully the Titans are clean with their carries. They hand off the ball correctly. Everything goes well. No shade at Josh Allen on the Bills. Well, the Jacks' defense has averaged two takeaways a game this year. Yeah, and Will Levis is known for being a bit of a gunslinger. So, Josh Allen two point oh, maybe that. I mean, it'd be fun. I'll take it. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is giving away. I mean, Jack's giving the ball away a ton recently. Mm-hmm. But. Well, the last time I'm not sure you want to remember this, but the last time your Titans and my Jags got together was January seventh, week eighteen. Winner wins the AFC South, loser misses the playoffs. And for the longest time, it looked like Tennessee was going to win the game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, "What?" Yeah. Yeah. Josh Allen rumbling, fumbling, stumbling to the end zone with a scoop and score, <sighs> winning 20 to 16. And to be honest, I felt bad for Josh Jobs because he just got he just got there. And I'm like, is Josh Jobs about to come from nowhere to the playoffs? Mm-hmm. But he didn't. And here we are. I mean, you imagine what would have happened if Josh Jobs would have led Tennessee to the playoffs after getting it because Tandem was done for the game. Mawika Willis looked like he couldn't even throw a pass. I mean, remember yeah. uh, the Sunday night game against, I think it was Kansas City, where he threw like six passes. Yeah, talk about a miss drafting a guy. He fell far enough that it's not like that big of a deal, but. 
man, he did not piece any part of his game together, which is why I was a little worried earlier in the year when they were saying that uh, Will Levis was taking snaps behind Malik Willis. I was like, oh, no. What is going on here? What do you also – what do you remember from that Week 18 decider last year? Uh, I remember that the Titans were going to walk away with it until <laughs> – about the last three minutes of the game. I remember Chig had a big game. He had a nice deep-ish pass for Josh Dobbs in the second quarter that was nice. Uh, God, I just remember the defense really holding the Jags in tech in, uh, in check until the second half and really the fourth quarter, and then just a really unfortunate fumble return to end the game. But I I don't know how you felt. Like Once that fumble return happened, I there was no – doubt in my mind i was like this game is over like we're we're done you know what's weird about that game the jackals could not run that ball at all like he's got a good run dude of course jeffrey sims and of course tennessee can i don't know what it is but like every but every other game we play the times you dominate time of possession Hmm, i wonder why run the ball and take time off the clock. Like, uh, let me see. It's 36 to 23, so basically 3 to 2. And you know what was weird about that scoop and scroll? How many times do you see the referees blow a dead before somebody can even score the touchdown? Well, the refs didn't happen. And yeah. What didn't happen? And, be, and it, I think you would say it was a legal fumble and a legal touchdown. Uh, it was fine. It stands. It, here we are. And hey, if that play hadn't happened, Titans might not have Will Levis. So maybe it's a blessing in disguise. <laughs> he would have gotten a home playoff game against Justin Herbert. Which would have been even worse for my psyche. Actually, be honest with you, you would have won because I would have taken Mike Vrabel over Brandon Sam. But that's another story. Yeah. I mean, we saw that happen in week two. True. Man, Brandon Staley's just on the short list of coaches that needs to go. Maybe, yeah. So, um, uh, give me a couple keys for this game. For this game. Yeah. So first and foremost, got to stop ETN from running the ball. Like the Titan strength is run stopping on defense, and if they can shut that down and make it a one dimensional game, they might have a chance. Uh, that's that's slowing down, you know, Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. And I mean, heck, the, who's the wide receiver three in Jacksonville right now? I think Zay Jones was arrested. This yeah, week. that's why I don't know who it is anymore. Anyway, uh, to have a chance of slowing them down, they need to really establish themselves to stopping the run. On the flip side of that coin, they need to get at least a one score lead and they just need to lean into Derrick Henry. If they can start pulling defenders down and they can get a couple of play action deep shots that would be lovely and the last key i really would just love to see medium pass protection it doesn't even need to be perfect it doesn't need to be great but just to see a little better pass protection than they've seen the last two weeks so that we don't shatter will levis's psyche moving forward because (laughs) we've seen what a young quarterback can have happen if they don't get the chance to develop because they're just getting whacked. The uh, shout out to Sam Darnold, who's seeing ghosts. <laughs> uh, don't want that to happen to Will. So, medium pass protection, defend the run, establish the run. What are your keys? Uh, stop Derrick Henry. Stop him from making big plays because it yeah. seems like every time we play the Titans, no matter if it's in Nashville or Dufall, Derrick Henry's starting to fall 197 yards and four touchdowns. Two, two, enough with the terminals, please. Play a clean game, but don't, but, but don't be afraid of taking chances down the field. And three, put your 11s, make it, make him, make him beat you from the pocket. Because mm-hmm. Levis can move a little, Levis can move some, but if he's in the pocket facing the rest, might throw one or two. The Tyson Campbell or Andre Cisco. Sounds good. 
I mean, I I never thought I would say, but the AFC South might be. I mean, this is one of the craziest years I can remember. The Bills and yeah. Bengals are currently out of the playoffs. <laughs> There's, I think, as it stands now, every AFC South team is in the playoff hunt. Whether or not that's going to stand in a month, we'll see. But reasons to be excited. Yeah, yeah, especially because especially because at least the. Uh, at least we've all got quarterbacks for the first time in forever. I know. Things are good around here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether you're in national, yeah. Well, 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 the weather could be a little cooler. Fair. Maybe get move, a little. Move north. Come to Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. You imagine, you imagine me playing my jack wall flag in the middle of Titan country. Yeah. Or have it? Or ha- well, uh, I'm not a I'm not a Florida or FSU or anything. <laughs> my my school doesn't even have football, so the Tennessee or Tennessee fans wouldn't even know if I wouldn't even know where my school is. Yeah. Okay, Mike. So thanks for hopping on. Wish you Titans well and uh, Jackson this weekend, and uh, hopefully we end up with uh, forty. Hopefully we end up with. Uh, <laughs> A forty-one, forty-one tie. That would be lovely. That would be very fun for fantasy. Uh, but do you have a real score prediction? And th- again, thanks so much for having I'm, me on, Dylan. I'm not jinxing. I'm not jinxing with school prediction. Okay. I'm not jinxing with school prediction. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. This was such a fun show. Uh, clearly, you know your stuff, and uh, Jaguars country is lucky to have you. <laughs>